the leading item to go in there is a glitter butt plug and tail. The starting point of it was really um, a series of photographs from an artist called Nicola Tyson and she took them on the banks of the River Thames, Christopher Nemeth and Judy Blaine and John Moore foraging away, as you do. From those initial images, a, a sort of a, a dialogue began. We were able to start drawing the threads and we started literally with an axis sort of at, at two, two lines saying this is 1980, this is now, what might take us from A to B and what might connect uh, the, these individuals together. In the early 80s much of particularly the Docklands and the, and the East End had been raised to the ground. The beginning of being able to kind of create your own media was in the air. Suddenly, we weren't contained. It was out there on the front page of a newspaper. One thing we've noticed already is how much um, salvage culture and uh, a sort of DIY culture has really informed a lot of creative people in London. The thing we used to manufacture was um, scavenged and found on the streets and then used this um, effluence to create some kind of affluence. And we're not talking DIY like in B and Q. All right. You're in my house now. I was supposed to go to Lagerfeld, Steve was supposed to go to Armani. <laughs> kind of was a bit stale for what we were wanting to do with fashion at that time. We weren't driven by money, so it became, you know, it's more about the art. Wanted we wanted to, to make a difference. difference. Yeah, that's what our passion was at that time. Stevie had a squat in King's Cross that we actually worked from. Those it wasn't kind of a squat. Well, it was kind of <laughs> low rent. Low, low rent. <laughs> low rent. <laughs> we were definitely aware that we were moving among circles of people that were all very creative. It was a little bubble of creativity. Mm. I think the spirit of the people in this exhibition is probably what connects them. You make the best of what. What, you, what you've got. It's just like a punk uh, mentality and it's like, you know, if you're going to do something, you go out, you do it, you get it happening. For us, the combination of sort of theatre or cabaret and dining kind of grew, it happened organically. I got on stage m m many times because at the beginning of Triangle Lips, no one wanted to do it. I um. did Michelle McManus who won um, uh, like Pop Idol in an inflatable fat suit, which I thought was, I thought I should have won for, but I didn't. From that, obviously Johnny Wu was a bit of a leader, but a whole kind of scene grew up around it. It was just like an incredibly intense atmosphere and just people going absolutely mental and like egos and just was electric. You've got to have the balls to stand above the parapet and say, this is what I'm doing and be judged on it. And that's not always good, but then have the confidence to just kind of keep going. There's a very broad spectrum of creative London in the show and I like the fact that it's in a disused building and we've all got the same vitrine. The vitrine. What is vitrine? It's like it's a trough. It's a trough on legs. It's a trough. I keep getting confused. Is it a vitrine or a latrine? Latrine's a toilet. So I've been telling everybody that I'm doing a latrine for the ICA. So firstly I had no idea what to put in this weird sort of box thing that I was shown that looked like an open casket and because it's kind of limited so you have to really kind of think. So I had all these different ideas, I was thinking about oh, this, that and the other and I was thinking like well why am I stressing so much, I'll just leave it to the last minute as usual and um, come up with something. The biggest challenge I think is to edit to something which is interesting, cohesive, tells the story of how we've how we got here. It's like a time capsule. <laughs> Welcome to the world of Body Map. Puppets from 1984. It's a sort of visual biography. To try to 
pack a story into a basically a tabletop is quite a challenge. Memorabilia, jewellery. I've got the five-year diary. Photo booth pictures. A court summons for fair evasion. The little van the bomb sign. <clears throat> An ashtray full of fags. Maybe poppers as well. Sort of little signifiers. What is this? My vitrine is actually a latrine. I decided to fill my vitrine with the carnage of like the aftermath of my shows. And there's a Judy Blame bag that I did, my fourth season, which I love. But I just think there's such an energy in the 80s. They didn't have to like make a big old business about it. That was just what they did. Yeah, I think I've adopted that kind of idea too, where it's just like, this is what I do. Not to be so scared of it. It's somehow we are all connected with each other, even if we don't know each other directly. The connections are very strong within those bubbles, within a bubble. It's a stylistic, artistic, contemporary, zeitgeisty kind of momenty people-y things. It's also, I think, quite difficult to define subcultures now in the way that it maybe it used to be when there was a clear define about your very tribal position. I'm a punk, you're a rocker, new romantic, very, very defined looks and kind of and, and ways to behave. People were just much more political and much more, you know, it was it was much more black and white. People do things and you know there's events and parties and things that get organised which are more underground than others. I don't know if that's necessarily counterculture because it, do it doesn't seem to be transgressive in any way. It just seems to be happening because it's happened before and it's cool, you know. We have seen changes. Obviously things are more corporate. Things are not just interested in some hippie idealism, but at the same time, I think people are also adjusting to the present commercial age that we exist in, and I think they're starting to work on ways of dealing with it, both for themselves and also just so they don't get spiritually subsumed by it all. The whole landscape has changed. London is an optimised city. It's been screwed to bits. It's exploited in every nook and cranny. But perhaps the opportunities have shifted into digital media and social media to be able to express that same naughty creativity that we had at the time. Those people now are charged with a different sensibility to those people that were there in the 80s. There are different battles to be fought. And I think it's very hard for um, young creators at the moment. They have to exist in a kind of digital, virtual world. Very interesting ideas become fads very quickly. And often they are not fads, but they are chewed up and spat out by the media in, um, in their insatiable quest for what they think is a next big thing. The pace is really fast. It's really exciting because everybody comes here and wants to work and there's a great energy, but it's, it's definitely hard to keep up with it some days. I think the difference I felt between Brighton and here, in Brighton you had great conversations in pubs and we'd talk about doing something, but that thing maybe wouldn't happen for a while or would never happen, but it, they would talk about it. And if, if, if you do that in London, somebody else will have made it by the next day if you haven't started doing it. So I think it's, it's got to go both really good things and, and sometimes bad things about it, but I, I wouldn't change it. It's exciting being a young creative in London now because there's so much happening. Um, it is difficult because, um, because of gallery systems and, and things, but, um, but again, that's why spaces like the White Cube exists exist, because it means that we have the freedom to play around. London is absolutely the most interesting place in the world. You never get this mix of people and this opportunity anywhere else. I think the support is there if you want to do it in the right way and I think if people think that you're serious about what you want to do, it doesn't matter which level or how you polish your stuff or if you decide not to, I think there's definitely people, huge mix of people out there that want to help you. What London has is this, this kind of incredible history, certainly in the last 50 years London's been really interesting for culture. At some point it was Paris, it, you know, during the Renaissance it was Italy, maybe in like 200 years there'll be some other city like Kuala Lumpur or something. It feels like it's had an amazing run, um, but you know, we're just we're granddads now in pipes and slippers, so it's not our job to keep it going, is it? <laughs>
I think the future for like Creative London is really good. I think now there's like such a foundation. I don't know, maybe through these people, like so many of these people from the 80s, they now are the backbone and they're like helping the new people and I think that's the most important thing because you have to look past to go forward. That's the best part. It inspires me to carry on and I'm not bored of it either. I see a bright future. <laughs>